Welcome to St. Paul's. Today we celebrate Transfiguration Sunday. It's the book end to this season after Epiphany. At Epiphany, these foreigners, these magi, came and revealed who this Jesus was. At his baptism in this season, we learned about Jesus' relationship with the Father and the Holy Spirit. And now, the visage, the image of Jesus is changed And once again, more is revealed. And the more we learn about Jesus, the more we love Jesus. Today's brightness, glimmering, shining image we see of Jesus next to these two prophets and shown to be the beloved son of God, then takes us down later this week to the beginning of Lent. But that time of repentance and turning away from certain aspects of our lives can wait. For now, we get to stand in the brilliant light of God. So come, let us worship the triune God. Grace and peace to you from our Lord Jesus Christ. Grace and peace to you also. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. O God, who before the passion of your only begotten Son revealed his glory upon the holy mountain, grant to us that we, beholding by faith the light of his countenance, may be strengthened to bear our cross and be changed into his likeness from glory to glory, Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Would you join me in the prayer for illumination? Open our hearts and minds, O God, by the power of your Holy Spirit, so that as the word is read and proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us this day. Amen. Our first lesson this morning is from the book of 2 Kings. 
When the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven by a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were on their way from Gilgal. Elijah said to Elisha, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me as far as Bethel. But Elisha said, Though as the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. The company of prophets who were in Bethel came out to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he said, Yes, I know. Keep silent. Elijah said to him, Elisha, stay here, for the Lord has sent me to Jericho. But he said, As the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they came to Jericho. The company of prophets who were at Jericho drew near to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he answered, Yes, I know. Be silent. Then Elijah said to him, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me to the Jordan. But he said, As the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on. Fifty men of the company of prophets also went and stood at some distance from them, as they both were standing by the Jordan. Then Elijah took his mantle and rolled it up and struck the water. The water was parted to one side and to the other until the two of them crossed on dry ground. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, tell me what I may do for you before I am taken from you. Elisha said, please let me inherit a double share of your spirit. He responded, you have asked a hard thing, yet if you see me as I am being taken from you, it will be granted you. If not, it will not. As they continued walking and talking, a chariot of fire and horses of fire separated the two of them, and Elijah ascended in a whirlwind into heaven. Elisha kept watching and crying out, Father, Father, the chariots of Israel and its horsemen. But when he could no longer see him, he grasped his own clothes and tore them in two pieces. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. from Paul's second letter to the Corinthians. Even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For we do not proclaim ourselves. We proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord and ourselves as your slaves for Jesus' sake. For it, is, for it is the God who said, let light shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts 
to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hear this word from the Gospel according to Mark. Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice, This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, he ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Would you join me in a word of prayer? Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. I think it is, uh, it's, it's only fitting that we would end the liturgical season of Epiphany with this passage from the Gospel of Mark. Transfiguration Sunday really embodies the meaning and the intention of the Epiphany season. There is this journey of anticipation, and then an encounter, and then there is an inquiry. It is an encounter 
that prepares us to enter the Lenten season of reflection with a glimpse of Jesus as the Christ. In Mark's gospel, we have seen these glimpses of amazement and wonder and revelation uh, that help us to prepare for the upcoming time of penitence. It gives us a, a, a moment of pause up on the mountain with Jesus and his, and his inner circle, a moment where we can see something maybe that we've never seen before and embrace new possibilities. As Charles Wesley wrote, change from glory into glory till we take our place above, till we cast our crowns before thee, lost in wonder, love, and praise. It's a great story of witnessing God's activity in the world and our opportunity to be a part of that work. The disciples who go with Jesus up the mountain, Peter, James, and John, uh, they're singled out several times in the gospel as witnesses to the identity and the role of Jesus in the world. They are the ones uh, Jesus takes with him on the journey to heal Jairus' daughter. They are the ones that Jesus takes with him into the Garden of Gethsemane. Uh, you remember that story uh, on the most anxiety-filled night in Jesus' life. Uh, the disciples can't even stay awake uh, to see the pain that he is feeling. And, and as I said this week, each time the disciples come, go away, they're left with co confusion and even more questions. These three disciples, Peter, James, and John, are witnesses to multiple manifestations of Jesus' identity as God's agent but they continually fail to comprehend or grasp of the core of who Jesus is and what his mission is. Peter said to, to Jesus, Rabbi, it's good to be here. Let us put up three dwellings, one for you and one for Moses and one for Elijah. Now, biblical scholars over the years have tried to explain what in the world Peter meant by this suggestion. But I think trying to find meaning in these words is, is kind of pointless. Uh, it's, simply, it's simply the way Mark explains the situation. Uh, Peter was frightened and he just said the first thing that came into his head. He simply couldn't comprehend what was happening in that moment. And in our lives, we have moments that occur when, when we're left without words. Our wedding was one of those moments for Lene and I. The birth of our daughter Bailey was one of those moments. My ordination as an elder in the United Methodist Church was another one. Uh, standing next to the hospital bed uh, when we lost my mom was another of those moments. God's presence with us, lost in wonder, love, and praise. I bet you could think of some of those experiences in your own life as well. There are mountaintop and valley moments throughout our lives, and we're never really quite ready for them. At times they arrive unannounced, changing us in all sorts of ways. But there is one thing that they all have in common. Uh, these moments have something to say to us and to teach us. But too often, our response is like that of Peter, uh, just saying something crazy because we can't understand the significance of, the, of this meaningful moment. When Peter does finally uh, quit talking this nonsense, this cloud appears, and the voice of God gives this instruction to Peter, James, and John. This is my son, the Beloved. Listen to him. I mean, that's it. Very short, to the point. What Peter said made no sense. What God said uh, up there made it a mountaintop experience. This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Uh, the first part of that, this is my son, uh, it changes that event, uh, helps us to better see who Christ is. Uh, it has been described as a theophany, 
of the appearance of God, an epiphany. Uh, it's, it's the transfiguration when we try to find big words to explain something we don't completely understand. But there are really some very clear words that are spoken in this obscure event. This is my son. You know, earlier in the Gospel of Mark, Jesus had been talking with his disciples about his identity. And he says to them, who do you say that I am? And their answer is Elijah, Jeremiah, John the Baptist. But then Jesus presses them, no, who do you say that I am? And you remember Peter's answer is finally, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. It's interesting because this is also a time that, that King Herod has heard about Jesus and his works. And, and he thought Jesus might be John the Baptist back from the dead. Remember King Herod had John killed but thought he had come back to life. So all these questions are surfacing about the identi identity of Jesus. And you can imagine the disciples are having their doubts. And so Jesus takes his inner circle up a mountain for this encounter. And it is here that they learn in a definitive way who Jesus is. He is no other than the son of the living God. I mean, no source could be more convincing than the voice of God himself. You know, there have been some big events in the life of Israel the Exodus, uh, Moses and the Ten Commandments, uh, David anointed king, the return from exile in Babylon. But, but nothing is bigger than this. I mean, this is not just another in the long history of God's actions in, in shaping uh, history and who Israel is. Th this is God in the first person. This is God's very own son. This is what happened to the disciples. And they were oblivious to all that was taking place around them. And I don't want us to be too critical of them because many times in our own lives, we've had our heads in the clouds and thinking only of ourselves and not looking at the world around us. And we miss big and important things. But this is not just another act of God in the life of Israel. This is the fulfillment of all those past events. This is the culmination of the ages. This is the hopes and fears of all the years. This is God's son. And we're told that God says Jesus is the, the beloved. I mean, the, the disciples were having uh, this discussion and, and the heavens say, this is my son whom I love. Now, I guess you could say there are many folks in the Bible that God loved. Uh, Adam, uh, God loved Adam, but Adam disappointed God. Uh, Abraham believed that, that uh, he was part of this chosen race and, and had this son uh, and took him to sacrifice. Uh, but even, even Abraham tried to force God's hand in the events that brought about the birth of his son Ishmael. David was a man after God's own heart, but he abused the power that he was given. Solomon was wise beyond the years, but he brought idolatry back to the land. Isaiah was this great prophet, but, but the scriptures tell us he was a man of unclean lips. You can travel through the pages of biblical history and find many whom God loved. And it's true, God loves you and I, but what we see is that in Christ, God's love becomes complete. This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Listen to him. I suppose that where most of the problems that we come with, come, with, um, come in this difficulty that we have in listening. You know, even, even non-Christians have this place where they believe that Jesus is the Son of God. Most religions throughout the ages agree with this concept. Uh, they don't have an issue with that. Uh, and God must have loved Jesus because Jesus was doing the things that God said. But listen. Listen to him. 
that's another matter altogether. Most of uh, the pain in this world is due to our inability to listen to God. Elie Wiesel tells this story of a prophet who came uh, every day to the center of a city and he delivered his message to them and day after day. And as time went by, people just quit paying any attention to his ranting and they really became oblivious to him even being there in the center of town. Finally, someone, someone who felt sorry for him came to the old man and they approached him and they said, Sir, why do you keep crying aloud in the very streets of our town when you know that people don't listen and the people here will never listen? And the prophet said, I gave up hope long ago that they would listen to me, but now I go on crying out lest I listen to them. In that journey to Jerusalem, the disciples, uh, they're given a genuine moment, uh, this happening, this revelation uh, with clarity of who Jesus is and the work that is ahead of them. That, that their sustainability will come in knowing that God is with them. They'll continue to speak out in the world that's not always eager to listen to them. And I think maybe the most important thing we can learn from the transfiguration story is that we can't stay up on the mountaintop. I know it's tempting. We'd like to build some dwellings there and we'd like to just hang out with Jesus and listen to the stories that he tells, listen to the love and compassion, not have to go back to the real world. But the story tells us that Jesus and Peter, James and John came down from the mountaintop. And I believe that the reason they headed down from the mountaintop is that there was work to be completed. Jesus would speak of that work as in terms of, uh, of sight for the blind, of feeding the hungry. And all these years later, uh, I think that work to be done is in that, is that the future of our church is that we've got to end problems that are with us. We've got the problems of systemic racism in our culture. We've got problems with equality in education. We've got to include all God's children at the table. We've got to do things for the homeless. We've got to bring comfort to those who are hurting. We've got to love God and love neighbor. There's a lot of work to do here. But for those who will listen, we will find a mountaintop experience here on the mountain of transfiguration. We will learn from heaven itself, this is my son, the beloved, if we will only listen. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Would you join me as we affirm our faith together using the words of the Apostles' Creed? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Would you join me in the prayers of the people? Radiant God and source of light, as you surrounded Jesus with your glory, so you come to us in penetrating brightness as we gather today in our worship. We come today gathered in your love. We come today gathered out of a deep need to find you again in the midst of our wearied lives. And we come before you looking for your light and your love on this journey of discipleship. 
Holy God, many of us come before you feeling like we have climbed a part of the mountain and that we can't go any further because our loads are too heavy. With our worries and regrets, with fatigue and illness, despair and concern for our community, for our country and for this world. But we know that there is so much more of a climb left and that we must get to that point where we can be dazzled by your divine light. So lead us, Lord, to the top of the mountain. Give us the strength we need to continue on in our journeys where we might see your dazzling light lifted by what is divine, filled by your sheer delight of what is numinous and ethereal and grounded and real. Holy God, give us eyes to see and ears that will listen when you speak your transfiguring love into this world. For we long for a glimpse of your glory, a glory that shines in the darkness, and the darkness will not overcome it. A glory that touches our lives with the beauty so holy that it heals our wounded souls and gives strength to the weary. Illuminating God, draw us closer to the example of Christ. And help us to remember that in Jesus of Nazareth, you have broken down the dividing walls of hostility between us. And yet even in our own insecurity, we still try to maintain walls that will separate and isolate. Help us to choose the limelight while you call us, or we choose the limelight while you call us to explore the shadows and brighten the dark places. We desire to stay longer on the mountaintop than we might ought to. We want a spiritual comfortability that reinforces our version of things. But all the while, you bind up the brokenhearted and you walk to the valleys of need. So radiant God, fill us with light and courage to carry your good news back to all the corners of the world, to bring your joy to all. Holy Spirit, give us the grace to live every moment changed by your glory, that we would dare to live with hope and encourage and love reflecting the life of Jesus, through whom your glory shines in the most unexpected ways. We pray this in the name of the transfigured Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. I invite you now to share signs of God's peace with those gathered around you in worship, and to send messages of God's love and peace to those as well. As we continue to pass the peace with one another, I want to welcome you again to St. Paul's United Methodist Church as we celebrate Transfiguration Sunday. I'm glad that you're worshiping with us today. Just a reminder that uh, be sure and register your attendance with us. You can do that on the live stream page of our website. You can do that on the app as well, especially if it's your first time to be in worship with us. I hope you'll be sure and give us your name, address, and phone number, your email address. Let us know how to get in touch with you and tell you about all the great things that are going on at St. Paul's in these days. If you're interested in becoming a member here at St. Paul's, you can contact any of our pastors through the webpage or uh, you can contact Nina as well and we can give you more information about how to become a member here. This uh, Wednesday is Ash Wednesday, the beginning of the Lenten season and we have several worship opportunities available that day. We'll have online services at noon and seven o'clock. You can go to the webpage and stream those services. We'll have outdoor services at noon, 6 p.m. and 7.30 p.m. We would like you to register for those. You can go to the website and register to be a part of those services so we'll know how many to prepare for.
There are a lot of Lenten resources available in the newsletter and on our webpage as well. Uh, all, our daily video uh, devotionals for the season are there. I hope you'll check those out and, and use those as a way to uh, begin a new discipline in this Lenten season. I want to remind you that the Putting Your House in Order webinar is coming up next Sunday, February 27th, 21st from 6 to 7.30. It's a great workshop uh, that will help you to get your finances in order about living a legacy and how you want to take care of those things. Really an authentic legacy of faith in your life and to help your family with those things. You can register for that on our webpage. I want to remind you too that when the weather is not freezing and wet, we are having outdoor worship services on Sundays from 11:30 to 12:15. I hope you'll, if you're able to, you'll join us for those safe and meaningful services. Our offertory today is "Lead Me, Lord," and it's sung by our choral scholars. Would you join me in a word of prayer? God, we thank you for the ways that you are working in our lives. We thank you for the lessons of this Transfiguration Sunday that, uh, that Jesus is your son and that is loved as we are loved and that we need to listen to him and the work that is ahead of us. We thank you for the blessings that you have poured out upon our lives. Help us remember, O oh God, that everything is a gift that you have given us. Give us a cheerful and grateful heart as we return a portion to you so that the work that needs to be done here might be made complete. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Lead me, Lord. Lead me in thy righteousness. Make thy way plain before thy face.
May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.